Hello and welcome to Talk Agnomy, the podcast dedicated to improving ag literacy around the globe. I'm your host, Brian Black, and here we are at the International Agri Center for the annual Ag Ventures Day. So we just parked here and we're getting ready to go into Building C over there, but I ran to none other than the Dairy Princess, Lindsay Mendonca. Hi. Good. <laughs> So Lindsay apparently is presenting here today. So there's just a, a massive display of different agricultural endeavors for these fourth grade students to learn about. And I know that we're going to have the COS livestock team here. They're going to have their petting zoo here. They have some horses over there. So I think it's just going to be a really fun day. So uh, we might swing by and see Lindsay's presentation while she's doing that and just get some great coverage on what's going on in the Ag Ventures uh, facilities. So yeah, catch you guys in a minute. So we're here in Building C, also known as the Cortiva Building, and they're setting up for the lunch activity, I guess, for these students. So over here you can see that they have just benches full of fourth grade students here, and Krista Chapman, who's over there and, and is kind of directing this whole thing, was just telling me that this is a nutrition skit that they're putting on to teach the kids about you know, the, the my plates and the healthy eating and all that great stuff. So we're going to be following around. I think this is the Tulare group from what Krista was telling me. We might be following them around throughout the day and just kind of seeing what they go to, what uh, talks they, they're at, and just kind of checking out what the other building is. So yeah, we're going to get a lot of coverage here today, hopefully. So we just got done with the dietary um, skit there. That was a really cool presentation. I think the kids enjoyed it quite a lot. So they're moving over to the dairy pavilion, I think, now and check out some of the other exhibits and, and some of the presentations going on. So we're going to go ahead and follow them here as they 
go along on their educational journey. I think this is a really well run program. I think this is an awesome event that the Adventures team is putting on. I actually ran into Mr. Hollingshead, who's my former principal over there, and he was telling me about some of the stuff that they do over here, and it just sounds awesome. So I really hope we can get some more coverage here and get some more information about what the Adventures has, to, has in store for these students. So here we have our line leaders leading students out to their next event, but we also have Aggie the Cow over here, the mascot for the Ag Ventures team in the International Agri Center. And he's here talking to all these young students and just, you know, spreading all the love and, and attention that agriculture deserves. So he's doing a great job out here. We'll probably check in with him later. So maybe we'll go by and see if he can uh, tell us hi from the podcast. So that's awesome. So as you can see, the students are moving out over here towards the next building. And from what I understand, they have some packing uh, mules and horses over there. They have the Dairy Princess presentation. The Livestock Club is going to have their pet petting zoo. There's all kinds of great uh, information for these students to learn from. And always great presentations for them to listen to. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. And we're going to be able to go over there and listen to some of that stuff ourselves. And from what Carissa tells me, Trisha is actually over there as well from the Farm Bureau. So maybe she can give us a quick interview and talk about a little bit what, about what's going on today. And, Maybe give us some, some great insight about what we should be looking at and listening to. So as you can see, the students here are going to get the opportunity to see these large farming equipment uh, examples here. They have some tractors from New Holland, and over there we have some Kubotas and some case tractors. And so they just get the opportunity to see some of the technology that we use in the ag industry today. So you can see the students walking to their next destination, and um, it's just awesome that I think these students get this opportunity to learn about agriculture. And I think that a lot of these organizations like Ag in the Classroom are doing such a great job helping with this and um, this is really amazing. I mean this is exactly what I've been advocating for for so long. We need to start teaching these students young about agriculture. That way as they grow they're more aware of where their food comes from and they'll be able to make smarter choices as consumers eventually. So I think these students are enjoying it as well. They're, they enjoy learning about all the different parts of agriculture and all the different technologies and animals that goes into our industry that we all love so much. So. We're going to go over here and see what this presentation is all about and, and check it out and try to get some uh, some insight here and uh, hopefully it's a pretty entertaining one. So here we have the Ag Crimes Demonstration where these two gentlemen are going to be talking about what they handle in terms of crime uh, regarding the agriculture industry, you know, stolen animals, stolen equipment, that sort of thing, vandalization of property, you know, all that. I'm sure they go into more depth about what exactly they cover, but uh, I kind of just wanted to get a glimpse about what they're talking about here and kind of let them take it away but these students seem pretty engaged in in the idea that you know, there's actual crimes on farms I guess people didn't really think about, about that but it was a big issue so portaville and vice city about a year and uh, i had a great career and i decided to retire a few years back and then because of contacts that you make throughout your job and your career your teachers will tell you life is all about contacts. I eventually became a uh, district attorney ag investigator and I work with Brian. He works with the sheriff's department and I work with the district attorney. So my role normally is uh, Brian and his co-workers will, and Tulare Police Department, my city police department, they will uh, enforce crime or enforce laws, sometimes make arrests, and they will send reports to our office. And once they get to our office, uh, it's our job to make sure that the VA uh, follows up those, those cases and, and does any other extra work. Sometimes send them back to the other agencies and together we try to get those cases through the system to uh, make sure that tag crimes are investigated and prosecuted. So we try to work together. We uh, put out, we have equipment like uh, Brian will be going over some things here in a minute. Uh, but we have tractors, we have uh, quads, we have generators, we have lots of different things that we put uh, uh, tracking equipment on. And, uh, and we have cameras, we have some high tech stuff. And we have some other things that we'll be presenting here to you shortly. We brought our two trucks. Believe it or not, they're farm trucks. They're farm looking trucks, but they have lights and sirens on them, just like a, a police car. They're just not marked. We're kind of sneaky that way. Yeah, quiet, quiet but that's about it for me, and I'm going to let Brian go on with uh, some of the stuff that we have up here for you. So. All right, I need a volunteer first. Let's see. Uh, 
Um, gray sweatshirt. <laughs> ourselves. Vest, correct. That's the first thing I was going to show you. So. so I'm going to have uh, Gabriel, right? Gabriel slap this thing on. It's pretty heavy. Yep. So on our vest, we have a bunch of different things. We got some uh, handcuff case, some extra magazines, um, baton. Go ahead and pull this out. Got a baton. Um, flashlight. And then go ahead and turn around, buddy. Got our radio so we can talk to our partners and That's dispatch. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, another little extra pouch. And then we also got our helmet. Something where we need to have extra protection, we throw it on. It's actually bulletproof, so um, he's protected pretty well. Um, same with the helmet. It looks pretty good on you, buddy. Yeah, that's good. Probably about 20 pounds. It's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. Uh, so the reason we, uh, the whole, the whole reason of it uh, is what happens when stuff gets stolen. What do, what do we do if stuff gets stolen? Try to get the person, right? We try to find out who stole it and get the stuff back. Um, the problem is, out in the country, there's usually... what? How do we typically find stuff that's stolen? Anyone know? Exactly, we find security cameras. But in an orchard, do you think there's a lot of security cameras? No. Not a lot of security cameras, huh? So, another thing we use is... Uh, try to find their shoe tracks. So we'll follow shoe tracks, tire tracks, footsteps, exactly. Try to track down which way they went. Um, so if we have a particular spot that keeps getting um, stuff stolen from, we will set up our own cameras, um, which we have down here. We have a little camera we'll set up and try to catch somebody on it. Um, there's a bunch of different tools we use. Um, our equipment is typically stamped, um, which I don't know if you want to give that demonstration yeah, in a sec. Um, here, I'll let you talk about the camera. So this camera is basically, uh, some of you adults may hunt or, or something, uh, you know, out in, the, uh, out in the mountains or whatever. It's a wildlife or a, a game camera. Uh, it's no different than what hunters use to uh, track game. And uh, we put these up in trees. He's having a hard time with that because yeah. you have to have a solid surface. I about broke my arm. Uh, <laughs> so we put these up in trees. We put them up in orchards. We put them on buildings. And uh, any place where we think that there's a problem. And what happens is they'll either work on battery um, or a charge. 
but they have a little uh, computer disc in them and they will... So I'm now leaving the ag crime demonstration and that was a pretty cool demonstration. You tend to not think about crimes that happen on the farm, but they're more common than people would like to admit. And it's awesome that those guys go over exactly how they solve those crimes. They talked about tracking footprints and using technology and cameras and protecting themselves and using safety, safety equipment to try to make sure that they don't get hurt by any of the criminals. But it's really cool that they went over that detail because it's not something that most kids or most consumers, I think, would even think about. So today we're going to go over, over to the uh, dairy demonstration here and see what they've got going on. So right now the National Dairy Council is putting on a mobile dairy unit demonstration and we're going to kind of look at what they've got going on. So they've got a live cow right there in their trailer that they're talking about how they milk it and what they do with the milk afterwards and uh, they've got all these students here talking about what goes on in the dairy industry. So we're going to take a look at Remember it came out at about 100 degrees so we cool it down to about 40 degrees so that it stays fresh. We have to keep it cold for it to stay fresh a lot longer. Well, once that milk is all cooled down, then it goes on a little trip. Every single day, a great big truck comes to the dairy farm where those cows live. We have a lot of trucks in this area, those big long milk trucks with that big tank on the back of them. In fact, the milk truck was there this morning when I went to go pick up this cow. So that truck will pick up all of their milk and it carries the milk off and transports the milk to a processing plant. In fact, we have the craft processing plant just down the road from here. We have several others as well. So at those processing plants, there are two things we do to process the milk. The first thing is something we call pasteurize. Can you say that word? Pasteurize. Pasteurize means that we heat the milk up to about 160 degrees, but only for about 16 seconds. It's a really fast process. Pasteurizing uh, ensures that it's a very safe product for us to drink. And the second thing is what we call homogenize. Can you say that one? Homogenize. Homogenize means that we separate some cream out of the milk, breaking up the fat globules so that the milk stays one consistent fluid. Once that milk is pasteurized and homogenized, then we can package it up. We put it into bottles or containers or maybe little cartons, and we send it off to wherever it needs to go. So all that milk we see in our grocery stores, and our supermarkets, even the milk that you get back at school in your cafeteria, it's coming from cows just like this one. This is where it actually starts out. But there is only one way that she can make milk. I think you guys can figure this out. We know that she is a mammal. So why do you think a mammal will make any milk? What reason do they have to do that? How about up here? Yes. To feed their babies, that's right. So if she doesn't have a baby, would she need to make any milk? No. No, she would not make any milk at all if she does not have a baby. It doesn't matter how old she is. So a cow is already an adult by the time she is about one year old, she will have her first baby when she's about two years old, and then she starts to make milk. Well, cows make that milk for about 10 months out of a year. How many months? <laughs> for those 10 months, we call her a fresh cow because she's making fresh milk, just like this cow is now. For the other two months, sometimes even a little longer, she needs to take a little vacation. She needs to have some time off to rest. So she will not make any milk at all for those other two months, and we would call her a dry cow. Then she has another baby, and it starts all over again. So we call her a cow, not only because she's a girl, but also because she is a mother, a boy, have a different name for him. Bull. Do you get? Bull. It's a bull. That's 
right. I don't think I heard anybody say boy cow, so that's good. And what about a little baby? You guys know that one? A calf. A calf. So she is a girl. She is a mother, so we call her a cow. A boy is a bull, and a baby is a calf. Now, the most important thing that we are getting from that milk is something we call calcium. Can you guys say that word? Calcium. Now, I think some of you already knew that there is a lot of calcium in milk or those other milk products. But does anybody know why our bodies need that calcium? What does it help us to build? Um, how about right here? What do you think? Say it again. Yeah, there's something specific in our bodies that it helps us to grow. How about here? That's right, it helps us to build strong bones and it's important for our teeth. So when we drink our milk or eat some of those dairy foods like cheese or yogurt, those have very good sources of that calcium as well as some other vitamins and minerals that our body needs. But we still need to this awesome demonstration where they talk about where the milk comes from, what it goes, what process it goes through to get to the shell, and how the cow goes about producing milk because as we talked about before, we have a massive population of people that don't understand that their milk comes from cows, where the cow has had a baby to start producing that milk. So it's awesome that somebody like this would talk about this in depth and detail and really explain to these fourth graders how their milk gets to the shelf. And something that's really important, I think, for the future of our agri uh, community. So it's, I think it's a really uh, great presentation that they're doing here. That last demonstration with the live cow that they were talking about, I think is an important one because it goes over some of the most important aspects of ag education and that's getting down to the basics. It's one of the things that I've tried to illustrate quite a few times here on this podcast. People tend to overestimate our consumers at times. That's not to say that the consumers are um, unintelligent, but it's to say that they have been misinformed for most of their lives, unfortunately. And so we are now in a position where farmers are having to explain from basically step one what happens in the production of food. And that's not a bad thing at all. It's just something that we need to understand as we're communicating with our consumers and with our youth today is that we need to explain to them the important details that go into producing their food. So for example, this last demonstration talked about how cows need to be pregnant or have produced a baby in order to produce milk. And that's an important detail that not a lot of consumers are actually aware of. They think that the cow just randomly starts making milk and that's not how it works because no mammal can produce milk without first having created a child. So I think that's an important distinction that we need to pay more attention to. I'm glad that these demonstrations are doing such a good job of really talking to these students about the important aspects and the important details of food production. We'll see what else they have in store for us. So now we're in the dairy pavilion where some of these classes are starting to make their way in and they have a lot of smaller presentations here. These presentations are going to be about 10 minutes. So over there we have uh, Lindsay the Dairy Princess, we have the Dairy Council of California, we have the Tulare Ca uh, County Cattle Women, we have Edison and just some other, you know, PG&E and some other companies here, the School of Veterinary Medicine. So we're going to try to get some coverage on some of these groups as they're talking to these students here. I think this is a pretty cool little uh, setup they have here where they have, you know, um, from, from what Trisha was explaining to me, these students aren't going to see the same presentation twice. So they're, they're going to have a few demonstrations where they're just going to rotate out, and so that's why they have several of the same presentation twice. So they have two cattle women booths, they have two uh, electricity booths, they have two of almost everything here. So that way if the students miss one, they still got that same experience. So they're trying to just cover the general grounds of the topics that the students, that each of these pre presenters are talking about and less about what the actual presentation is so we're going to go over here and listen to the dairy princess presentation for a few minutes and see what she has to say about the dairy industry
And over here we have the service dog booth where a lot of these students are tend to crowd around because, you know, who doesn't like a dog? So we're going to listen to what these guys have to say about their dogs. So the dog's vest, in case you couldn't see, says agriculture detector. So what that means is this dog is responsible for sniffing out certain pests and dangers in the agriculture industry on, on operations. So that's a really interesting concept. It's not one that, similar to the ag crimes, I think a lot of people tend to think about as part of the ag industry. It's awesome to see how some of these industries can incorporate each other into their business and professions. These students pre seem pretty interesting and, and interested in some of the topics that they're covering here. Over here they have sand, clay, silt, oh they're talking about soil science over here. So this gentleman has explained the difference between silt, clay, and sand and giving demonstrations on how to create each of the uh, examples he's presenting there by you know, combining water with different soil samples. So that's really cool for the students to learn about. And over here we have um, the... So this gentleman is talking about different pests in the ag industry and how to prevent them, how to take care of them, and how to deal with the possible threats that they held. Over here we have more soil science demonstrations, which is awesome. We have the necessary process in which a seed germinates and talking about seeds and, and plant science. More artillery kind of uh, dairy women, or cattle women, excuse me. And as a big bunny. We'll come back and see him later. Got a little goat. Let's go over here to the Edison booth and see what these students are listening to. So the Edison booth is talking about the importance of staying safe around electrical equipment and the path that lightning and electricity can travel through and in the off chance that a, you know somebody actually does get too close to an electrical box and shock themselves. Um, some of the safety precautions that go into making sure that a lot of that equipment is, is heavily guarded and protected and yeah. And over here, PG&E is giving the same demonstration. <laughs> 
Apparently I'm being recorded while recording. <laughs> there you go. How are you guys doing today? Good, you? Pretty good, pretty good. So what's your demonstration? I'm guessing you guys are similar to the Edison group? Well, we, well it was going to be funny, but then you stuck the phone, so I know you weren't were expecting me. Yeah, we're doing the exact same thing. Nice, that's awesome. We're beating your name. So, yes, we're here to entertain the kids, or they're here to entertain us. I'm not sure which is which. <laughs> So PG&E here is now giving their version of the demonstration that Edison gave. We're going to see if there's going to beat theirs. You guys know that Christie's our friend, right? Yeah. But sometimes they cannot be our friend. So what I'm going to do is I have an extension cord in the back of the house. And there's a transformer. It's a lot like the transformer on the pole. Except this transformer steps the voltage up from 110 to 12,000 volts. This line will, will have 12,000 volts in it. That's why we have to have our special gloves on. Clothes and special shoes. Okay, so and it has to be be behind that yellow line. Because we haven't lost anybody yet today, so <laughs> hopefully this will get come out okay. So several years ago, we had some kids that were climbing the tree. They fell out of the tree. Somebody called the paramedics. The paramedics were looking at them. And they noticed that they had a broken, busted, broken bones. The other injuries they had was they had burnt hands and feet. They couldn't figure out how they got burnt. So what happened, because the lines below the, the, our, the tree branches below our lines was too far down for them to touch and the ones were way up here. So what they found out later was that the kids climbed up in the tree and as they got out further out in the branch, so this is the branches that were above our lines, because it caused the tree to, to get into contact with our lines. Yes. So to show you, all these, all these props have have wires in them to make it for better Hollywood effect. This is a real branch. I want you, I want you to verify that it's a real branch. Thank you. <laughs> but okay, here. All right. So trees conduct electricity. Branches collect electricity because of the high moisture content. Might be in the middle of the night and there's three too close to our line, that's what you're seeing. Okay, so the other problem we have around here is we have people that don't know how to drive. They either hit, they hit our poles and the wire comes down and lands on the pole. It comes down off the pole and lands on the car. Sometimes the tires blow out, sometimes they don't. During this during these storms or if you see any wire hanging down from our pole. Now we're going to the waterways presentation. So the top of the hamburger is made out of wheat. Okay? Wheat, to grow wheat, you need water, you need soil, you need sun to grow the wheat that goes into this hamburger. Just this hamburger, just the top bud, takes 11 of gallons of water. So 11 of those things to make the top bud. Lettuce, lettuce is made of most of the water. It takes one and a half gallons to make the one liter of lettuce. Tomato, so you grab a tomato, you slice that tomato, you got that one piece, that one slice of tomato, takes three cups. Just one slice. Cheese. Where does cheese come from? Okay, cows. So cows need they need water, they need food to be able to produce milk, right? So all that goes into it. So one slice of cheese takes 56 gallons of water. And just right after 
competition. Who added all of this up? No? Oh, I don't see. <laughs> How many? Just yell it out. A little bit less than that. 516. Good job. You're very close. So it takes almost 700 gallons of water to make a hamburger, right? So the Waterways presentation is basically explaining the water requirements taken to grow in their favorite foods, which I think is a really interesting way to teach students about how much water ag really needs. And especially in California, we're facing that issue right now of not having enough water to produce the kind of food that we're trying to produce here. So I think it's a really good presentation for these kids to hear, and we'll see what else they have going on here. So let's listen to the ag, um, the ag detector canine. So the interesting thing about that dog that she said was it's used in a lot of food safety inspection um, activities, which is really interesting to think about because usually when we think about food safety inspection, we think about a guy who's just looking through all the individual foods and making sure that nothing sketchy kind of shows up. But this dog is actually here to make that job easier on us and detect anything that we can't detect naturally. And so there are even some fruits that are completely banned, even if there's nothing wrong with them, that the dog can detect and kick out before we even have to worry about seeing it. So outside the Dairy Pavilion, we have the COS Livestock Club um, Animal Exhibition here. So they have animals of every species available at COS. They have a horse, they have some steers, they have a pig, and they have some sheep over there. And all these students are getting the opportunity to pet these animals and learn about them and ask the COS students about these animals and fish. So let's see if we can get a closer look. I'm going to start with the sheep over here and see uh, they have, it looks like they have two sheep here. <laughs> <laughs> we got two sheep here. What do you think of the sheep? What do you think of the sheep? Cool. Pretty cool? Yeah. So these kids are getting to feed the animals some grain. Oh my god! The sheep don't look too nice. You getting to feed the sheep today? Yeah, I'm gonna feed the sheep. You're so fun. How are you liking it? I'm gonna they won't come to you? Yeah, they look a little mad right now. I'm not sure why. Grain. Feeding them grain? That's awesome. So what can you guys tell me about sheep? Sheep is like so small. 
soft. They're soft. They, 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 they like to eat. eat. They eat fast. They eat fast. Yeah. Because, because they're like boys. Yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 they drink water. What do we get from sheep? Uh, wool. 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 Meat. Wool. Anything else? Uh, clothes. Clothes. Nice. Good job, guys. They like, they like cloth, cloth of fur to like make like on sweaters. Yep. That's right. That's awesome. Responses from the sheep kids. So we're going over here and check out these hogs now as Hillary explains what exactly a pig is for. So she's just showing where the bacon comes from, and these kids are getting to feed this pig and learn about where exactly the meat comes from. The COS livestock team also brought these steers. And as you can see, the kids are getting to walk up and feed the steers, pet them a little bit, and learn about beef production and where exactly their hamburgers come from. The kids seem pretty excited about seeing it, and it was big. Members of the equine team over from COS talking about horses to these young students, and they actually brought a horse for them as an example. And they are going to feed her some products and show some different uh, equipment that we use for these horses. COS also brought their OH unit and they have some of their OH uh, members here talking about the different sciences that they go over at COS. And these kids here have, looks like some soil samples in the cup. Hey, what you got in your cup there? A bean. You got a bean? Yeah. Is it going to grow into a plant? No. No? Just a bean? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> so what did you guys learn here today? Um, we learned about cows. Cows. And plants. And plants. And beans. And beans? Nice. What did you guys learn about beans? Uh, I don't know. Grow. So we're back in the Dairy Pavilion. It seems like almost every booth now has an audience. So that's awesome that these kids are getting so involved. We're going to go back over here, looking at the Dairy Council of California and listen to what they have to say. And we're going to look at the Dairy Princess presentation as well and hear what they have to say about the dairy industry as a whole.
So the county of Tulare over here is talking about quarantines and, and illness uh, prevention and all related to pest management and agriculture, which is really cool. I think it'll be a pretty interesting one to listen to, so let's hear what these guys have to say. So this cow colored box here with the pink styrofoam in it is supposed to emulate the inside of a cow to allow the students to really feel what it feels like to reach inside a cow and feel around in there, which is, I think is pretty cool. And over on the other side there, you can see you know, the bone structures of the various animals involved in agriculture and even some non-agricultural based animals. And they have some equipment over here used by that. Right. Uh, timer. How y'all doing today, kids? Good. Hey, my name is Grant. Can you say Grant? Grant. And uh, where's Jen? Back there with the camera waving. Say hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Hey, and we are from the University of California, Davis, the School of Veterinary Medicine, right? What's a veterinary? Raise your hand. What's a veterinary? Does she get all the answers right in school? It's a doctor for animals, okay? So let me ask you this. When you go to the doctor, how does the doctor know what's wrong with you? Raise your hand. X-ray. X-ray. Detective. What? How does the doctor know what's wrong with you? Uh, you go to the doctor. Okay. So like, see, like, like, long-term when you breathe, or okay. like, or When you go to the doctor, if you have a headache, and your doctor asks, what's wrong with you, what do you say? Uh, I have a I headache, have, right? Have when you go to a cow, this is not a cardboard box, this is a cow, and they look at me, I'm talking. Four <laughs> minutes, that's all I ask, okay? If you go to this cow, and you say, how are you today, what does the cow say? Meow. Right, and what does that mean? I don't know either. So how does a veterinarian know what's wrong with your dog or cat? What does your dog say? What does the cat, Matt, cat say? Meow, right? How does the vet know? They're humans, they're animals. I'll teach, oh wait, 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 wait. I'm getting a pretend phone call, my like, pretend cell phone. Buenos dias, señor Gutierrez, good morning. Mrs. Gutierrez at the dairy, how are you doing today? Malo, bad, what happened? Any problems with los vacas? You got a problem with the cows? ¿Qué pasó? Problem con sus stomachs? Stomach problems? Bien, okay. Dame cinco minutos, necesito intencionar mis alumnos. Give me five minutes, I gotta train my students, okay? Bien, who wants to come with me on a pretend visit to fix a cow? Yes, let's do it. First of all, look at me. I'm a cow. Moo. 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 What's wrong with me? Exactly. Your doctor's all ready. You see, you got to watch, right? If your dog or cat is not eating, is that a good thing? No. So then you have to do something about it, right? you got to watch, right? Number two, we do things like we can take some blood out of the cow, right? We could take some milk out of the cow because sometimes they have infections in their udders, all right? And we send them over to the lab by air mail. And we push them around. All right? Put them on a petri dish like this. And whoop, comes up in the lab. This cow's got a problem. What's wrong with this cow? E. coli. Right? OK. So there's a pink thing. What's wrong with this one? E. coli. All right? Ooh, those are bad things. So the lab helps us out. We also learned a long time ago that the reproductive system of the cow is right next to the 
I'm talking. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm talking. Two more minutes, that's it, okay? The excretory system of the cow is right next to the reproductive system. What that means for you is that the place where the cow has a baby is right next to where the cow poops. So we figured out that if you put your hand in the rear end of the cow, you can actually feel to see if she's going to have a baby. You can also do some other things. How many stomachs does the cow have? How many stomachs does the cow have? Two. I hear three. I hear, give me one more. Give me one more. I hear four. So the person who said four. There are four stomachs. Look, look, look. Look, look. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Are there four stomachs in this cow? Yes. Can you believe it? Sometimes the stomach twists and blocks off the food. And the cow will die within a few hours. But what we can do is if we see the cow's having trouble, we can slice the cow open on the side very nicely and reach in and turn the stomach back and the cow's fine. It's incredible, right? And doing this, this palpation, can feel if that's a problem with the cow. Here's another thing. Sometimes the cow isn't sick. The cow is just going to have a baby. And what's the name of a baby cow? A cow. A cow. cow. You're veterinarians already. Is that cool or what? Hey, one more thing I want to teach you is I want to teach you how to use a stethoscope. Who wants to learn to use a stethoscope? I love it. I've got lots of silk. You all, listen, watch me. You all will use this. Trust me, I've done this for years. We've done this for 23 years. That's a poor little people. Watch this. So adults, watch me too, all right? You can try this out. You're, look at this. This thing has an angle to it. Your ears have an angle. Ladies, one more time, please, listen to me. Your ears have an angle, right? They go towards your nose and down, right? This angle, slide it in that way. If you turn it opposite, you won't hear a thing, all right? So slide it in like this, grab the white thing, pretend to say the pledge, I pledge that I am alive today, right? Hold your hand right here, all right? That's where your heart is, and breathe for me. Third time hold. Push, 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 I'm alive. How awesome is that, all right? Okay, and adults, your job is to clean it off for the next person, all right? So, one more thing before I let you go. Kids, when you're done with this, you can do anything, you can touch any of this you want. Please touch those things, pick them up. Excuse me, I'm talking. Excuse me, I'm talking. There's two things I do not want you to touch. Excuse me, two things you should not touch. You see the head of the cow over there, the cranium? You see this horse? Please do not pick those up, all right? Sorry, but you just can't do that, all right? So what are the two things you're not supposed to touch? Thank you. So go ahead, look around at all these stethoscopes. Look at those. Let's go out the sink with says, all right? Go to the nearest one. Let's go. Dr. Mike, stick those in your ear. Daniela, I love those name tags. They're so helpful. Dr. Daniela, stick that in your ears. So that was a very interesting demonstration. You talked about the reproductive system of the cow. We talked about the cow's digestive system and having a four chambered stomach. It's got a lot of interesting displays here for the students to look at the different bone structures. And He's even got each of the different parts labeled, which is really cool. If you look inside there, he's got his diagram of the cow. Which the students just to experiment with the stethoscope and see what it feels like. Alberto? Dr. Alberto, sit down here. Harbin, thank you. You are awesome. Thank you. So in this presentation, we're talking about how to effectively germinate a seed and what it takes for a plant to grow in the life cycle of the plant and what's necessary to make sure a plant stays healthy and active.
Inside the seat. You know, every seed, no matter how big it is, is or how little tiny it is, looks exactly the same inside. It has a little tiny little room inside the seat. If you open up peanuts and see that little fish shaped piece, that's a little tiny root with two little baby seed leaves on it. Every seed has that inside the seed. No matter how big it is or how teeny tiny it is. And that's what happens. The shell splits open when the seeds start to germinate and sprout. Seed grows, and the plant grows from outside that seed. So we have all these seeds up here, and just pictures of things, so we can let somebody spin and then try to decide. Yes, which seed it is. Let's try it. So this presentation takes a basic idea from your bio classes where seeds have to germinate and become plants in order to grow food and it puts interesting spin on it. So they play a game so that they can pick which seeds come from the plants and that makes the students really think about where their food originates from and it's a really interesting concept. So here we have the Tulare County Cattle Women's Group. We're going to listen to them talk for a little bit and hear what they have to say about their presentation here. And we might slip over and see this VTech student's massive rabbit and listen to what she has to say. Maybe we'll go over to the goat uh, presentation over there after that. <laughs> so, let's listen to what the Surrey County Cattle Women have to say.
And the thing we're going to talk to you today about is beef byproducts. If you have a 1,000 pound animal, about 650 pounds of that animal is beef in whatever form, roast, steak, hamburger. But the other third, about 350 pounds, is we call beef byproducts because they're part of the animal, but they're used to make other things or to be part of another product. So today we're going to make a, have a little game, and I'm going to have a few of you come up. There's a lot of items on the table. You can pick an item, and if you think it has a beef byproduct in it, stand over by me. If you say, no way, that is not a beef byproduct, you can stand over on the other side with Mrs. Lockett. So I'm going to pick 10 of you. Come up, pick an item, decide which side you want to go, and then we'll, we'll tell you about the products that are from the beef animal. So one...
So the Surrey County Cattle Women make a very good point, and they use a excellent game to demonstrate that point, and that's that there's a lot of products that come from animal byproducts that people tend to not even think about. I mean, you have Jello, you have car rubber uh, tire, excuse me, tire rubber. You have asphalt. You have all kinds of things that come from animals that people don't really think about. I know we did an episode on that, but they make a really good point out of it, and they use a fun little game to teach kids about what exactly comes from beef. So I think that was a pretty good demonstration. So there you guys have it. That was the Ag Ventures Day for 2019. Hope you all enjoyed this episode. I know it was a little bit of a longer one, but it's been some time since I've uploaded any episodes, so I kind of wanted to bring back you know, a longer episode and a more full episode to celebrate the coming back of Talk, of Talk Ag to me as we get some more interviews lined out for you guys. So I'm excited to be back. I know that I haven't uploaded an episode in some time. It's been a little bit crazy on my end. I've had some stuff going on with finals and all that. So we're back on track now. Now I'm getting some interviews lined up for all of you guys to listen to, and I can't wait to bring it back. I hope you guys are excited for it to come back. And I know during this episode there were some areas where some of it was a little bit quieter and other parts and some parts were a little bit louder. I did my best to edit it so it sounded okay, but the room was just really loud and there was a lot of kids there and it was just really hard to get my equipment to pick up on what I wanted to pick up on so it would kind of pick up on the wrong things at times and it kind of just didn't work out like I was hoping it would but we worked with it we did we we, we did the best we could and I'm hoping that you guys could hear it okay um, but yeah I'm hoping you all enjoyed and tuned in and stayed till the end and uh, can't wait to come back for you guys next week so don't forget if you wait today thank a farmer